Imagine being 24 and diagnosed with breast cancer. Imagine finding out stage four. Imagine not knowing what this means for your future. This is the real life story of Savannah's breast cancer. Hey friends, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and in honor of this, I am spending today talking about a real patient of mine, Savannah. Now, Savannah is amazing and there's patients that you have that will stay with you forever and Savannah is one of these patients. Notably, she's the youngest patient who ever had breast cancer that I helped her freeze her eggs and her fight and her resilience, it stuck with me. She also saw multiple doctors before she ended up in front of me, and she's a true advocate for herself and for others. And for that, I'm just so thankful to play a part in her story. Some people may be wondering why a fertility doctor has anything to do with cancer. So there's a whole part of our field called oncofertility. Oncofertility is when you work with cancer patients to preserve their fertility. So the treatments that we use for cancer, such as radiation, surgery, and chemotherapy, they can damage your ability to have children later. And so by emergently or urgently freezing your eggs, your sperm, your embryos, that way cancer doesn't steal extra from them. Cancer takes so much. Imagine finding out you have cancer, you have to go through all this treatment, you have to fight for your life. And then what if this huge goal that you had about wanting to have kids was taken from you? We work to have that goal not taken away. A few facts about cancer. Over a half million reproductive age women, age 20 to 49, are diagnosed with cancer every year. Over 11,000 of those are breast cancer. Now, breast cancer in young women, women who are under the age of 45, survival is really good. So the five-year survival rate is about 85 to 90%. I asked Savannah to relive some of those moments of getting that initial diagnosis. So I found a lump when I was in the shower, and it was a pretty big lump. So I knew that, you know, it was something I needed to go to the doctor for. I just didn't think that it would turn out to be breast cancer since I was only 24 years old, but um, they went ahead and did an ultrasound and then they did a biopsy on a Friday and by the following Tuesday, they called me and confirmed that it was breast cancer. Could you even imagine having a lump when you're 24 and then getting in to see a doctor so quickly? I probably would have ignored it. I am the worst procrastinator on my own health. I'm sure I would have said, oh, it can't be cancer. It's no big deal. I'm just going to ignore it, ignore it. So huge reminder to all of us to take our bodies seriously. And yes, nobody wants to go to the doctor or get ultrasounds or mammograms or biopsies done, but you know your body best. And if something's off, you should seek care. But I think this is also such a good reminder that doing self breast exams and understanding your own breast tissue is so important. For most women around reproductive age, starting to get mammograms around age 40 is a good screening technique. And people who are at higher risk shouldn't fall into average screening. One out of eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. That's huge. But that means you know people, you, your family, your friends who will have breast cancer. I asked Savannah what it was like finding out she had breast cancer. What was she thinking? How did it feel? So when the radiologist called me to confirm that it was breast cancer, I honestly don't know if I had many thoughts going through my head. I felt so numb. I was scared and I really didn't know what to expect. So the only thing that I could ask at the time was what do we do next? Obviously, survival is priority one, but why do we talk about fertility in the acute stages of a diagnosis or in early treatment planning? That is because cancer treatments impact fertility, is it has a notable decrease in your ovarian reserve. That means the number of eggs you have. I always use the analogy that inside your ovary is a vault, and that's where all your eggs are kept. Eggs come out of the vault every month, and when the vault is empty, you go into menopause. Very few things can tap into the vault and drop your number of eggs, but chemotherapy and radiation are one of them. In fact, after standard treatment for breast cancer, approximately 20% of women will be in ovarian failure. You'll be out of eggs. You'll go through chemo, and when chemo ends, you won't have a period again. You will be done out of eggs in menopause. But in women who are not in the 20%, those other 80%, it's not that you're normal or in ovarian failure. You actually will still have a decrease in your ovarian reserve. You will go into menopause earlier, and you have higher rates of infertility. To make matters harder, I don't know who the 20% are going to be. 
One out of five women who enter into standard treatment for breast cancer is going to end up in menopause. Side note, 20% that's standard treatment for breast cancer. There are certain chemotherapies for other cancers that have a rate much higher than 20%. The hard thing is we can't just take your eggs out of your body on a random day. We have to stimulate them to grow and then we have to take them out in an egg retrieval. So that process takes about two weeks. Therefore, if you need to urgently get started on chemo, I need two weeks of your life before we can get you there. One of the biggest barriers is that patients who have breast cancer are not talked to about fertility. They don't even get the chance to come to my office to hear my little spiel to talk about freezing your eggs or embryos. They just proceed through their cancer treatment. I asked Savannah, how did she end up in my office? When I was on the phone with a radiologist and I asked her, what do we do next? One of the things she mentioned is freezing my eggs if that was something that I wanted to do. So at my first appointment after receiving the news, I talked with the nurse navigator who told me how chemo can have an effect on fertility. So at my first appointment with my oncologist, I expressed to him how important it was for me to freeze my eggs. And he kind of just brushed it off and said, you know, we need to get other things done first, like full body scans to make sure it hadn't spread or anything like that. And I understood that at the time. So after I had those scans and my second appointment with him, I again talked to him about freezing my eggs and he still put it aside. And at that point, I wasn't comfortable anymore. I didn't feel like he was really listening to what I wanted. And so I decided to go to MD Anderson to get a second opinion. And I'm so glad I did. Um, at MD Anderson, I found out that they didn't do proper scans and not all my major organs were scanned. And so they had to redo them. And that's when I found out I was stage four. And I didn't know exactly what that meant at the time, but my oncologist told me how important it was that we needed to get started on chemo ASAP. And I told him that I wanted to freeze my eggs, that it was important to me. So he was on board with it. He gave me a two week period to do it all and set me up with a fertility specialist there at MD Anderson who went over everything with me, um, different programs and, and things like that. So um, I started researching as soon as I got home on different doctors and I live in kind of a small town. So I had to look more in the major cities as far as like Austin, Dallas, San Antonio. So I read many, many reviews and that's when I decided to go with the um, office that Natalie was at. A huge thing here is that Savannah was being an advocate for herself. Did you see how her first doctor just totally brushed her off? That is so common. I mean, unfortunately, that's common. People get brushed off and their concerns not addressed. And this is a very paternalistic way of practicing medicine, in my opinion. Okay, so what is egg freezing? So if you're coming to me for cancer, I'm going to do urgent egg freezing. This means that I'm going to stimulate your eggs to grow over the period of about two weeks. So you'll use shots. So hormone shots of FSH, little needles that you give in your sub-Q, meaning the fatty tissue for about two weeks. You're gonna come in for ultrasounds. So we're gonna be doing ultrasounds and watching as those eggs are growing. And then you're gonna undergo an egg retrieval. This is the most invasive part of the process. It's a surgery and a needle will be attached to the ultrasound and inserted vaginally into the ovaries. That way the eggs are drained. At that moment, the eggs will be taken and they will be frozen. Or they could be fertilized with sperm and made into embryos. If you were married, you might be freezing your embryos instead of your eggs. But that process takes about two weeks. And I gotta get you going before your cancer treatment starts. So let's just imagine that you are about to have chemotherapy, maybe radiation, maybe surgery, depends on what's all going on for you. And here I am talking about freezing your eggs. It is a lot of information. You want to keep that option for having children open, but you're making huge life decisions. And this is the dilemma that patients face every day when it comes to fertility preservation for cancer. And money, it's expensive. 
you got to get the money right away. And yes, there are some programs that can help. And so this is a hard time. And Savannah echoes that as well. The egg freezing process was a little bit overwhelming for me at first. Like I said, I was 24 and it's just not something that I ever thought I would have to do, especially for the reasons that I had to do it. So it was just a lot for me to take in at the time. But I met with Natalie and she explained everything in great detail in ways that I could understand. And it was really important for me to have a doctor who had already worked with cancer patients because I knew that there would have to be extra precautions in place. And when she told me that she had, and she reassured me that they would monitor me throughout the whole process, it was a really big relief. And I felt comfortable. So I had a really great experience, but being metastatic, I can no longer carry my child. So the egg freezing process just is that much more special to me because though I can't carry, I know I could have my biological child, which is really special to me. We don't think about the long-lasting implications of a cancer diagnosis. Society is so focused on survival, understandably. But not only running out of eggs, Savannah has a double whammy. You may not have eggs, you may be in menopause, but regardless, you can't carry a child. So getting eggs out so that we can make embryos later that's so important. Another thing is that our protocols are really different for patients who have breast cancer. We want to keep estrogen levels as low as possible. Therefore, we can proceed with fertility preservation without worrying that we are going to advance the stage of the disease. Think about that. If you have an estrogen sensitive disease, I'm freezing your eggs, makes your estrogen level higher. I don't want to get eggs out at the compromise of your current care. Savannah's been an amazing fighter. We got through her egg freezing process. She underwent her chemo. She lost her hair and she never lost her smile. She even modeled an intimate line of clothing for women who've had breast cancer because your bodies are totally different. She's a huge voice for the metastatic breast cancer community, especially in the young women. And I asked her what helped her when she got diagnosed. My advice for someone who gets a cancer diagnosis is, you know, make sure that you're comfortable with your doctors and that your questions are being answered. And if you're not comfortable, then it's okay to get another opinion. Also, just take time for yourself. Do the things that you love to do and be gentle with yourself. Know that every emotion that you have is okay. And all you can do is just take it one day at a time. I couldn't imagine going through what Savannah did. I was able to watch her go through the stage of her life with grace. We froze her eggs years ago. She's still out there advocating supporting others. And for that, Savannah, I just want to say thanks. If you guys want to learn more about Savannah, feel free to follow her on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is at Savannah Marie underscore MBC. That's for metastatic breast cancer. You can also follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, and you can always get more fertility related information on the As a Woman podcast. Again, Savannah, thank you so much for sharing your story.